Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, Kentucky's election may be over, but some lawmakers are questioning state election board officials about long lines at the polls. And there's some good and bad news when it comes to inflation. We'll explain coming up. Plus, warm weather is on the way out and showers are on the way in, followed by some very cold air. The breakdown ahead as Mountain News at 530 starts now. Dedicated to southern and eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. A legislative panel meeting got heated when discussions turned to the election today. Some lawmakers grilled state election board officials over long lines at polling places in some counties on election day. WIMT's Bill Pendleton was in that meeting and shares what took place and what some suggest to fix the problems. Representative Jason Nemes showed this video to committee members Thursday. He says it shows a very long line stretching around the building 10 minutes before a polling place was to close in Oldham County Tuesday. We asked the Secretary of State to reject this plan, and he took it to the Board of Elections, and you didn't reject the plan. That's what happened. It was as bad in Bullock County as this, and probably in other counties. I don't know. I wasn't there. I only speak with what I know about. This is unacceptable. Some lawmakers are also concerned that actual board members were not at today's meeting. But the board directors say there should have possibly been more foresight on their part. I'm sure that, you know, the lines that we had in this general election will certainly be taken into consideration when any new plans are developed in the future. And I do believe the county clerks will do that as well. The president of the County Clerks Association says the problem simply is money. There's not enough to pay poll workers sufficiently. Some poll workers in some counties make a whole lot more than they do in others. There needs to be a uniform plan. Secretary of State Michael Adams says he's disappointed that his plan for more polling places was rejected. I think it's unacceptable to see five or six locations in a large county like Oldham or Bullet and to see voters waiting in line for two hours is just unacceptable. Since COVID, some counties have moved to voting centers. Others still use the traditional precincts. There's no one right answer for the whole state. We're a diverse state, but I do think that there should be a floor. There should be a floor of a formula that says if you've got this many people, you need this many places to vote. Election officials say there needs to be creative thinking and how to attract more poll workers. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Election officials say among the reasons why voting took so long for some was the length of the ballot and some people actually doing research on candidates on their phones while in the voting booth. Overcast skies continue to increase throughout the mountains as we watch what's left of Tropical Storm Nicole move toward the region throughout the rest of this afternoon and into this evening. There you see the thicker clouds working it. Well, you did before the image updated there from UVA Wise. 61 there, it's the thicker clouds as, thank you, the more uh, thicker part of uh, Hurricane Nicole or what's left of it moves toward the mountains. Plenty of overcast here in Hazard and a little bit of atmospheric smoke too. 68 mild degrees here in Hazard. We're falling below 70. And for those of you still at 70, go outside and enjoy it right now while you still can because we may not see 70 for quite a while because we've got some cold air moving in. Here comes that overcast on satellite and radar. First batch of showers approaching the North Carolina Tennessee border. So it's not that far away now. There's the scope of the system has made landfall again or is either either has or is about to cross portions of the northern part of the state of Florida and then you've got the cold front out to the west. So you definitely want to keep that first alert weather app handy as we run through tonight and into tomorrow because we've got plenty of showers on the way. Temperatures stay mild and steady in the 60s. But the rain becomes more steady as well as we head into tomorrow. Details on just when it moves in and when it moves out coming up in a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thanks. The 2022 midterm election is still not over across the country with a number of key races left to be determined. We are still waiting to learn which party will control the House and which party will control the Senate. CBS's Natalie Brand has the latest from Capitol Hill. Tuesday was a good day for America, a good day for democracy, and it was a strong night for Democrats. 
President Biden thanked Democratic staffers and volunteers for their midterm wins, but acknowledged he'll need bipartisan support in Congress moving forward. Regardless of what the final tally showed, I'm prepared to work with Republicans. But the American people have made it clear they expect Republicans to work with me as well. It will be weeks before all the U.S. Senate races are settled. Are you ready to do this one more time? With the Georgia contest scheduled for a runoff election in early December. And I did warn y'all that we might be spending Thanksgiving together. Incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock is hoping to repeat his 2021 runoff success. Republican challenger Herschel Walker returns to the campaign trail tonight. We got uh, less than a month, and, uh, and I can put up with a month. Because right now, this seat means is a lot bigger than Herschel Walker. And I know they're going to throw more at me, even the kitchen sink, but I can catch it. It's not just the Georgia Senate seat that's up in the air. Election officials in Nevada say counting there could last into next week. We couldn't go any faster now, even if we wanted to. We in the state of Nevada must wait until Saturday to receive any of those ballots that were put into the United States Postal Service and postmarked by November 8th. The razor-thin race between incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto and Republican Adam Laxalt is still a toss-up. Arizona's Senate race leans Democratic, but ballots there are also still being processed. Control of the U.S. House leans Republican, but dozens of races haven't yet been determined, including some key battleground districts from coast to coast. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has already announced his plans to run for the House Speaker position and named a transition team to help make the switch to the majority if the GOP does win control of the House. Voters in some states passed measures that were not able to get through Congress or the state houses. That includes South Dakota, where more low-income residents of the state will be able to excess Medicaid. This is the seventh time Medicaid has expanded in a Republican-led state. Others include Oklahoma, Utah, and Missouri. Arizona voters passed rules on governing medical debt. The proposition, which passed by an overwhelming majority, caps the interest rate on medical debt at 3 percent. It will not, however, forgive already accumulated debt. There is some good and bad news on inflation. A new report shows overall consumer prices are rising at the slowest rate since January, but food prices remain high, which means this year's Thanksgiving feast will be an expensive one. CBS's Bradley Blackburn reports. Fossil Farms in New Jersey is busy packing up and shipping out fresh turkeys. How many turkeys are you going to sell this year, you think? Uh, over 10,000. 10,000? Over 10,000. Ben Del Coro is the VP of Marketing and says a number of factors are making prices higher this year. With poultry, it was really compounding. Uh, so we had fuel prices that were on the rise early in the year. Uh, we had grain prices that went through the roof. And then we had avian flu. An avian flu outbreak has killed millions of turkeys nationwide, leading to lower supplies. The latest numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics show turkey costs almost 17% more than a year ago. And grocery staples are on the rise. Eggs are up a whopping 43%, butter nearly 27%, and potatoes are 15% higher. Unfortunately, I think the cost of food will remain high for both Thanksgiving and Christmas Hanukkah season. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger says the latest figures also show housing costs still climbing at a rapid pace. But within the report, there are signs of improvement. Overall, prices are slowing. A sign the Federal Reserve's interest rate increases are working to cool off the economy. At the December meeting, the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates probably by a half of a percentage point, not by 0.75%. And the reason is that they are going to be happy with the results of this particular report. Schlesinger says prices could continue to trend lower, but it will be some time before inflation drops from the current rate of 7.7% to the Fed's target rate of just 2%. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Boonton, New Jersey. Another twist in the crypto world, Binance, one of the world's largest crypto exchange companies, says it's not going to buy its embattled rival FTX. The company says it looked into FTX's finances and noticed the mishandling of customer funds and alleged U.S. agency investigations. 
Without Binance buying it, FTX is poised to collapse along with the rest of founder Bankman Freed's vast crypto empire. The Wall Street Journal reports Bankman Freed told investors it needs about $8 billion in emergency funding. No word yet from Binance on the decision to pull out of the acquisition. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, booking flights and hotels for holiday travel will quickly add up this year. Expert tips on how you can save before you go. But first, some beneficial rain is back in the forecast, but so is some very chilly air. Breakdown ahead. W